welcome to another exciting edition of DYCA TV with me, Callum Craig. And me, Mara Mia. It's Friday the 20th of September 2013 and the last day of Block 2. Coming up in today's show, we'll be looking at the DYCA open evening which was held last week. We'll be finding out about the Voyager 1 space probe that recently left the solar system. We'll be taking a look at the Japanese nuclear disaster and asking what are the alternatives to nuclear power. We have a sports roundup. We'll be finding out about the Catholic festival celebrating the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. All this and more, don't you dare go away. Because you're not allowed to leave for. Last Thursday, DYCA opened its doors to prospective students and their parents and carers. It was a chance for the academy to show off what we do and have a bit of fun in the process. Our reporter was there to find out what was happening. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Sky Louise Portman and I'm here at the September opening evening at DYCA for Year 5s and 6s. Basically, I've just been welcoming people into the academy, showing them around a bit, showing them where to go, just making sure they feel nice and welcome, and so they'll probably want to go here. And I think the Year 6 children, uh, they're kind of very excited about it, and there's this new thing about coming to the big school, and they kind of, some of them are quite overawed by it, you know, the size and the number of people who work here, and the number of students who come here. Uh, I also think that it's, uh, I've got my, my daughter is uh, now in Year 6, so it's kind of a, a familiar thing for me, because I'm going around doing the same things for my daughter daughter Sidra. Uh, my son's in year 11 but uh, so I'm doing the same things for my daughter as well so I kind of kind of empathize with the parents and the parents activities but uh, for the year six students yeah I think they're kind of that mixture of uh, excitement and doing all these different things these different subjects you know right through from PE through to art to science to English uh, but kind of just realizing really wow this is a big place compared to primary school. Do you remember coming to an evening now? Yeah, I remember meeting you halfway round as well. I didn't annoy your mum, did I? Yes, she did. You must be joking. Moving on. Last week, we were visited by Radio 4 presenter Sheila Dillon, who was reporting on the high standards of food here at the Academy. Sky Portman caught up with her and her producer to ask her a few questions about what she was up to. When you first came into this school, what were the first two thoughts you thought of? First impression was the size of the building and it was a very impressive building to pull up to and the second impression was the calm cleanliness of it all. And this was before I spoke to anyone. We well, yours the same. The same and then when we started to talk to people how polite they were, what good manners they were, you know that I think that's in a, in a way that you can judge any organisation, you know the way they'll hold the door open for you, they'll say good morning, they'll smile, they won't scowl at you, they won't look at you as though you're a pain in the neck. I mean, everybody goes to school with pretty good manners. So what have you been doing here today then? Well, this is the second day we've spent at the school and we've been trying to get a picture of this school because it's food is, is part of the whole philosophy that makes it such a great school. And we've been talking to pupils, teachers, cooking staff, Chef Richard, the principal, the vice principal. We've been, we've been trying to record a bit of everything as well as being in the dining room, dining room, as well as being in the restaurant. 
and in the kitchens to get a sense of why this is such a great school and why food is part of the reason it's great. So, you know, in these two days, we're trying to understand how, how a great school becomes a great school using food. You know, why, why does food matter in, in education? You know, most people would, a lot of people would say, what's it got to do with it? You know, beyond the fact that you've got to have a certain number of calories to, so that you can concentrate. But why is there this emphasis in this school on the quality of the food, the fact that you all sit together and teachers sit and eat in the dining room? Why do the teachers serve breakfast to the pupils, to their class? You know, what, what's the philosophy behind that? Last week, Catholics and Anglicans celebrated the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a feast that celebrates the figure that they believe that to be the mother of Jesus Christ. Mary has always been a central figure in Christianity. She's always been absolutely key, right from that moment early in Luke's Gospel, when she's told, Blessed are you amongst women. She also plays an important role throughout Christian history in providing us with the female that's right at the heart of events. What's your next fixture? Against Primrose tomorrow. How do you think it'll go? Have you played them before? Yeah, we beat them. Um, 7-1. Yeah, 7-1. Seven, 7-1 seven, one. One and it were pretty much all us, to be honest. They had one chance and that were it. Fortune scored and over red kick. Which was Which good. Were good. It were a good finish, yeah. Do you think it'll be a tighter affair this time round? Uh, no, I think his team's too good to get beat by them. Yeah. What are you doing to prepare for that game? What are the type of things that you regularly do? Well, we train like every Tuesday and then like we we like before the final last year we had like two sessions before the final dinner to prepare. So um, we just train and then in school we talk about football and tactics and stuff like that, so how we want to play and then we tell us so, fitness every week. <laughs> we play a lot of matches though, like just little five side matches like we are now. Just to work on passing and things like that. Uh, I am the senior one manager um, and I've had them since fresher year. Uh, I've taken them through from fresher year and developed them into the team that they are now. Do you think it's a, you're building a successful team, is it one for the future? Oh definitely, not just for the future, now as well. Um, from fresher year they've been training, ever present from fresher year, all the way through, uh, which resulting in us getting to a final last year at South Lee Stadium. So the progress over the, over the years has been fantastic. And it's just, it's just through the dedication of the lads, really, and, and turn up to training that that's been able to happen. What value do you think uh, doing these extracurricular activities do, for example, with football? What do they bring to the students? Well, there's, there's a good social aspect to football, isn't there? It's, it's a team game, so the boys get to make new friends, they have a bit of a laugh, they have a bit of a joke. Uh, and not only that, this, they get to play within the parameters of, of, a, of a game situation, so it gives them a bit of some good boundaries to follow. Um, and also just have fun and enjoy it. I am the coach of the girls football team. Um, since I've worked at the academy four years, the girls football teams have grown more and more and we currently have an under 13 girls football team which involves freshers and prep girls. We have an under 15 football team which involves senior one and senior two girls and an under 16 girls football team which involves senior three girls. Uh, we also for the first time this year have an under 18 football team which involves six farmers and senior three. Um, over the past four years we've had lots of success. Last year we reached two finals with the under 16 girls um, reaching the final at South Lee Stadium. Um, unfortunately they lost but they put up a very good performance and they were superb and we were very proud of them on the day. Um, the under 18 girls football team have played their first game this season in the FA Cup and we beat St Peter's in Harrogate which was a very competitive school and we were very proud to beat them. Um, training is on Tuesday night, three till half four and Anyone is welcome. NASA announced last week that the Voyager 1 space probe launched in March 1977 had finally left the solar system, making it the first man-made object ever to enter interstellar space. This is an amazing achievement for mankind. It's incredible to think that a spacecraft that has been travelling away from Earth for 36 years at a speed of 11 miles a second can still be sending back information to us on Earth. Voyager 1 has lots of scientific instruments to study the planets. It has passed and had a famous golden record which features 90 minutes of audio, including music from around the world and a special greeting from then UN Secretary General Kurt Voldheim. Where, here's a clip. I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. We step out of our solar system 
into the universe seeking only peace and friendship, to teach if we are called upon, to be taught if we are fortunate. The record was included so that if the probe was ever found by an alien civilization, they'd be able to listen to the sounds of Earth. So long as they have a record player. Now the Voyager 1 is a nuclear powered and its plutonium power cells are expected to keep it working till around 2025. And nuclear power has been in the news recently, following the Japanese nuclear disaster of 2011. In March of that year, a massive earthquake and tsunami hit the east coast of Japan. The huge wave destroyed pumps that carried cooling water to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station and three of its four reactors melted down. This means that the radioactive fuel in them overheated and began leaking radiation into the air and the Pacific Ocean. The plant has been leaking radiation for the last two and a half years and it may take lo- as long as 40 years to decontaminate the site. This is a terrible disaster and the scale and consequences of it are not yet known. So is nuclear power a good idea and what are the alternatives? As a civilization, we have a big problem. Modern life needs power. Power for transport, power for heating, power for food production and power to create electricity. Think of all the things in your life that need electricity. Over the past 100 years or so, the main way we have generated electricity has been burning fossil fuels. Coal, oil and natural gas. Fossil fuels are non-renewable, meaning that eventually we will run out of them. So the search is on to find alternatives. Here are some of the options. around and it's a little thing called the turbine that um, never like never like stops. There's only two and a half percent of electricity um, right at this moment. Wind power! Woo! <laughs> Solar power! Solar power comes from the sun and it can never run out but it has one percent of electricity, so I don't give you that much. Yeah. <laughs> Hydropower. Hydropower is great because it makes um, electricity with falling water. Uh, it uses 16% in the world. It can never run out because it's water. So, yeah. It splits the atom and it, it releases um, nuclear power energy. The, bad, the good thing about it is it never runs out. It's a sign of um, a, it's a sign of a radioactive, and if if you go anywhere anywhere near it, it can hurt you really badly. Geothermal power, yay! <laughs> Geothermal power is good because it's heat inside the earth, which heats up the water, which makes steam, so it'll never run out. The good thing is, it will never run out. Yay! Geothermal power, we need more of it. No. Well, I certainly think about that next time I leave a light on. And as we head for the autumn, we are going to be needing a lot more lighting. This Sunday is the autumn equinox. This is when daytime is exactly as long as the night time and the nights draw in. It's time to think about how far we've come and where we're heading. And speaking of time, Apple founder Steve Jobs once said, Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Jobs meant that deep down we all have an idea about what we want to do in life. So have a think about what it is and start to make it happen. That's all for this week. Have a great holiday and join us next time for another edition of DYCA TV. Goodbye. Goodbye.